This is sickle cell anemia. The pathophysiology of sickle cell anemia is characterized by the loss of red blood cell elasticity. Remember, normal red blood cells are quite elastic and they last and live for about 90 to 120 days normally in circulation. The elasticity of a normal red blood cells allows the cells to change shape, deform, and pass through capillaries. However, in sickle cell disease, there is a low oxygen tension, which is going to promote red blood cell sickling and repeated episodes of sickling damage, which is going to decrease the cell's elasticity, which means it's going to fail to return to normal shape once normal oxygen tension is restored. What this basically means is that these cells are going to remain rigid or sickle shape. If you look at the pointer, you could see this sickling. The actual anemia of the illness is caused by hemolysis, so the body will actually destroy these deformed cells. This is eosinophilia. As we look at the field of view, you'd notice that there is a marked increase in the count of eosinophils. Note that eosinophilia is not a disorder unless it's idiopathic or primary, but more commonly seen secondary to another disease or infection. Some common diseases that we see an increased count of eosinophils would be allergic disorders like asthma, hay fever, drug allergies. We could also see it with parasitic affections, with eosinophilic gastroenteritis, and Addison's disease. Notice that it's usually and typically with a normal blood smear stain hard to find eosinophils as, it, as they only account for about 7% of white blood cells. In this field of view, we're overwhelmed. We're going to look at a few blood disorders. The first one is going to be infectious mononucleosis. It is a viral disease caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. It is also a member of the herpes virus family. We're going to zoom on in. One of the key indications that you have mononucleosis are the squashed appearance of lymphocytes. They are also called reactive lymphocytes. Notice how it looks like someone took a normal lymphocyte and physically squashed or stepped on them. This is acute monocytic leukemia. At low power magnification, the first thing that stands out is the high concentration of white blood cells, specifically monocytes. As we zoom on in, we're going to carefully look at the nuclei within each monocyte and pay close attention to the characteristics. Now, in acute monocytic leukemia, most of these cells are pro-monocytes. Now, pro-monocytes have a very characteristic appearance, as you can see with this pointer. And again, as we zoom around and zoom in and look at all the different monocytes, you see that they have a nuclei that has a delicate folding pattern, almost like a piece of tissue paper that has been crumpled up a little bit. This is one of those key indications of acute monocytic leukemia. This is acute or chronic granulocytic leukemia of the myelogenous type. It typically occurs between the age of 25 and 60 and is associated with a unique chromosomal abnormality. The major clinical manifestations of malaise anemia, and leukocytosis are related to abnormal, excessive, and unrestrained growth of granulocytes within the bone marrow. This is what is typically seen under a microscopic view of a blood smear. And if you notice, you see a huge, abnormal, excessive count of granulocytes within this field of view. And as we move around, we can't even point to one as there is an excessive amount of these granulocytes. Again, typical diagnosis of chronic granulocytic leukemia.